Um, yeah, so that's actually, I should do that more. It's just cut thing, it just make little breaks on that so that the videos are easier to deal with. That's cool, I can start doing that. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that that way. Uh, cool, so what we've got now is, oh wow. That white screen really throws light on my face. Ooh. Um, Where are we going? Yeah, so now here's the trick. So, and this is me, this is like meta stuff for me thinking about the actual videos. Um, so these these are all going to be of a piece. So I'm not gonna go back and explain what we're doing. We're just, we're working on this Altrix thing to get an MFA going for Altrix. Cool. We're at the, we're at the point now where we want to go to PyCharm. And so what we're gonna do, we've got we've got our credentials file coming down that gives us a valid set of credentials um, from from Amazon. So it sends our access key, our secret key, our MFA ID and our MFA token, goes, sends out to Amazon, gets back a set of credentials and store a uh, session token and stores it. Then we've got our push to S3, which reads that sec session token and pushes data up to S3. And so the last step that we need to conclude on or to, to finish is um, making communication with Redshift to tell Redshift, hey, Redshift, go look at that file that we just sent up to S3, S3, um, and load it into a table. Uh, and so we'll just, I have no idea how hard that's going to be. Um, new file. Copy to redshift.py. We're going to use the full name because it's not too long. Um, So one of the first things I want to do is figure, is make sure that I get this lined up right. Let's see, that's wrong. Let's see this. Copy to Redshift. There you go, copy to Redshift. So I'm putting those up at the top just to make sure I see it. And so now if I hit R, it's still there. Okay, cool. Uh, right on. So now what we're gonna do, Bado3, which is our Python library. I'm getting a little tired, copy Redshift. Uh, go back to step four in the tutorial link. This looks like it might be complicated. That's not good. Uh, when was this? Four years ago. Okay, let's look for something more recent. Let's try this documentation. Also, let's look at this one. And it looks like this one. That's where we just were. Auto 3, client redshift. Give me the word copy in there. Copy cluster snapshot, not helpful. Copy grant, not helpful. Not helpful. Not helpful. Not helpful, not helpful. Not helpful. Crap. Well, so I guess we could just do... So you could just log in to Python, to Python, uh, to this pull from S3 and load it in Russia. I like to manage this process. Cluster using S3, however, provides documentation on Amazon. I wonder if I'll find a method that will allow me to upload the diverse cluster. 
Oh no, they were actually about a three with flying cloud. Yes, but I'm not able to see it. And then it's in my workbench. Yep, let's see what this is. Um, yeah, so I think basically we just need to. Yeah, okay. So we just we just make a connection to Python, sorry, to Redshift with Py2 copy or cop G, whatever. Um, Python Redshift connect. I just want to see that article's a little bit old. So I just want to see if Py2 copy is the way to go. Yep. Connection, DB host, port, user, password. Um, gotcha. So we're going to have to. I'm just trying to think through the security implications of this. So, what we're going to have to do is. Each user has their own login to Redshift that gives them access to their specific tables. When they log in, basically we're gonna have to create IAM roles for each user that allow it, because the users also have access to their specific um, S3 buckets that yeah, because the copying commands run on Redshift, and Redshift have to have the role to talk to S3. And so you send the command down, right? Because the command that we sent down to Redshift included the role, right? The copy, yeah, okay. So this is the command that we're gonna send. So you're gonna log in as your individual user. And each individual user will also have, so I need to make some notes about this because this is getting to where, um, I am getting tired. Uh, not just because it's 8, I mean, 8.30, whatever, but like this, doing this is kind of intense uh, and a little bit draining, but it's all good. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm not even gonna mess with that right now. I'll just figure it out from here. Um, okay, so the first step is just make a connection to Redshift. Um, right, which is cursor execute from select all, fetch all cursor close connection. Uh, Pandas, yep. Uh, where is that? Okay, so we can close this one. I'm gonna try and start closing a few um, windows now because it's, I have many, uh, but not too many because I wanna keep something open. So connection string, connection to connection string, SQL, Cursor equals con cursor, execute, close. Okay. So, whoops. I see they, the hotkeys are not the same on this application as every other Mac app. And it's just like, that should move me to the top of the file. Don't do that, PyCharm. Especially with like navigation keys or your text editor. Um, all right, this is just going to bork all over the place, right? Delimiter format, invalid syntax, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, where did that come from? Also, why is there not? Oh, is this Python? Oh, whatever. I know what's going on. Uh, I go to this, probably. 
that's a slight. Okay, um, start at the top. So we're gonna connect, that's cool. We're actually gonna move this up top, top. Oh, see, does it again. That's, the hotkey should go there. Yes, that's how we're gonna connect, which we'll do that in a second. Um, so another thing we're gonna have to do right now, by default, I'm pretty sure we won't be able to actually connect to the Redshift cluster because I believe it is firewalled completely off. I'm gonna have to open a, uh, a port for my IP address to actually get to it. Um, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the case. So let's just do this to start with because I don't wanna screw that right now. I'll deal with that in a minute. First thing is just make a connection. So this, do the next step. So like I don't need to mess with any of the rest of that stuff right now until I actually make a connection to the database. Um, so we're gonna try and make a connection to the database. And well, so now you just try it now, and it's not going to do anything because uh, oh, it's not there. So here, I remember we go to the terminal, and then we do pip install that. I do like Python a little bit. It's got some good. I no, I I like it. It's good. Um, it's still. It's still not in my hands yet, especially the navigation stuff. Like, that's frustrating. Um, oh, ha, right. Let's actually make a connection, because all we did was make a string. This is gonna explode. Not translate host name to address node name nor service provider nor no, whatever okay so it's cool not surprising uh so we need to get the url for our redshift cluster which we're going to find i'm guessing that's this endpoint It's not going to be that or that. So let's see if, the, if we can make this error go away and get something else. Uh, it's looking helpful. Time out on us, that was gonna happen. I'll bet it's gonna time out. Uh, also, what's the syntax for? Set access environmental variables. Um, How? Stand by. Be right back. CLI. Oh, there we go. Delete. And set. No, how do we set them? Um, I think it's just export var name thing. I just want to look at this real quick. Yeah. I'm, by and large, I don't have. Um, anything sensitive inside my uh, grimoire, but occasionally there might be stuff in there. So if I'm looking at something that might be close, I'm gonna back off and go look at it. Yeah, so it's just export and then think. So, because what I think I'm gonna want, what I'm gonna wanna do here is um, get to the right application. Oh, that's not the right place. Well, yeah, operation timed out, okay. So it can't, so we can't connect to it. Um, is basically what's happening. 
So, all right. Um, I know what we need to do is, uh, the reason that, that that's happening is uh, Redshift is in a security group. And that security group doesn't allow access from the outside world to it. Um, so the security group is basically being think of it like a firewall, or maybe it is a firewall, I don't know. Um, Short table, manage item, change master, modify publicly accessible settings. Allow instance devices outside of UPC to connect your database through a cluster endpoint. Okay, so here's a security thing you all should really go check on. I don't know. Okay, so you would have to do, so the, it sounds like you would have to do this in order to be able to get to it. Um, the last IP address. Outside the VVC to connect to your database. We're gonna look. Redshift um, internet. Okay, so basically, it sounds like, I wanna do this. Let's get in keys, change master password, and drag rolls, configure. I'll start with storage for modify. Network and security. So it's in the default security group. Steps in modifying a cluster. In modifying a cluster window. Actions modify modify a cluster. That's what I just did. Clusters. This page looks different though. Oh, I was like on the, that's something that does mess me up with Amazon, like clusters, right? So here's the list of the clusters. I'm an Amazon Redshift, but over here, over here, I'm in the Redshift dashboard, which is, it's a different, try new UI, is that what's happening? Okay, so it's the new UI. That's why I was looking different. I was super confused. Um, but we're going to go back here because it makes more sense. Um, modify cluster. So, yes, we want to make it publicly accessible. Choose a public IP address, no. It's like us if you want an elastic IP address. They already have configured. Um, otherwise, select no to have Amazon randomly create an EIP for you. Okay, yeah, it's just gonna randomly do it. Um, after routing master password, we've already got. So it's in that security group. So I think what's gonna happen, again, I'm gonna, so I wanna go look at that security group. I think 
it should be set up to not allow traffic. I don't really know how to get the security groups other than going to EC2, so we're just gonna go to EC2 and look at it that way. Um, yet another tab. EC2 is the um, security groups. Uh, EC2 is the virtual machines. So here's our default security group, which we're looking at right now. Inbound rules. Why isn't that scrolling? Come on, scroll. Scroll. It's not scrolling. There we go. Oh. Well, uh, all traffic from all ports. That seems bad. We don't want that. Uh, all traffic from protocol port range source. Six three is a security group. Where do you set the IP addresses? Uh, source is that security group. Okay, and then we so we need to see what's in that security group. So this security group can do anything, but I don't think that security group. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So this is fine. This is fine. I, I was freaked out there for a second because I was like, they're allowing all traffic from everything. This security group can be applied to stuff internally, but like there's no, I can't get to anything inside the Amazon services right now from the outside world. Um, I can make S3 buckets publicly accessible, but that's a different thing. But like, I can't get to Redshift um, or to anything, right? Because so Redshift, Redshift is in, Oh, I'm gonna lose all this stuff, come here. I should open a new window, that's what should happen. Um, see that you up where you might see it. No, this one. So Redshift is in this security group, which means Redshift can do things across all ports, across all, um, protocols inside the, the virtual private cloud, in, inside itself. Um, if I was really better at this, what I would do is I create a new security group and, well, why don't we just do it? I'm not 100% sure about what I'm about to do. Uh, so definitely go research. But what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to make a new security group that allows access from my IP address across the Redshift port and then apply that security group to this set of security group rules, which should then let me connect to the Redshift server, um, which I actually hit save. I'll make it in public. I didn't because I, I wanted to look at this. Um, so I'm relatively certain that, uh, where's I gone? Cluster. Um, that when I switch this to public, nothing can actually get to it yet. But like it's, it's, it can be public, but nothing can hit it. I think, um, I, I need to, I need, I'll check with somebody on that. Um, and again, I'm not super worried about it. Like if, if I was doing this for real, I'd have somebody actually knows what they're doing, doing it, but this is me doing it. Um, why did that just turn red? Kilobits per second just went red. I wonder if I just got all staticky or something. Um, here we go, we're gonna do it. So the cluster is now internet accessible. Oh, actually we should be able to, we should actually kind of be able to tell. Um, it's modifying, we'll give it a second. It's not sending very many kilobits per second, it says down here, so. Apologies if the um, 
video is getting all freaky. Okay, available. So here's what I think should happen, which is to say nothing different. Um, which I wish there was a faster timeout, but and there probably is a way to set that, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. So we're gonna run this again. And while it's doing that, we're gonna make a new window. What is this called? Psycop G2. Timeout. What I could do is make animated GIFs while we're doing this. Um, There we go. We can make the timeout shorter. Uh, hey, you stop, stop, stop. Work. Ooh. Process finished. Got a kill. Um, we did that connection string. Connect. This will just make it go faster. Five seconds. I'm assuming those are seconds. Two, three, four. Five. Yeah, okay, cool. That goes much faster. Um, and actually what we're gonna do now, is just put that in there, just so we got it. Um, so that's good. So I'm pretty sure Oh, wait, is that a different error? Timeout expired. Yeah, so it still can't connect. Okay, good. Because what, if it had connected, what I would have expected to have happen is the username and the password fail. And you would have gotten a different error message, I think. Um, let's make that eight seconds. Um, theoretically, I could go back and test this, but what I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do now is make a security group uh, yeah, we're gonna do this just to get another window going. Um, so I don't know if there's a direct way to get to it. I just go through EC2. Um, security groups. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a security group. AWS connect, whoops. Uh, AWS Redshift Connect. The VPC is a virtual private cloud. There's only I've only got one. Um, I'm not going to give it any rules yet. Outbound rules aren't going to matter yet. Tags optional. Create the security group. Cool. And there's no rules for it. So now if I go to the security groups, got it. Um, so I turn that one off, I turn this one on. Cool. And so there's no inbound rules. But what, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my IP address in here for the um, for port. 5439, which is the Redshift port, apparently. Um, it doesn't super matter if you see my IP address, but I'm still not gonna flash my IP address, so bear with me. Um, uh, so, oops. Don't allow, don't allow, yes, no. I thought they used to have Google used to actually fly that okay it did if you just type what is my IP address it actually shows it to you without having to go to the website where's my IP address right now. Um, so I'm gonna edit the inbound rules just to tell you what I'm doing. I'm gonna add a rule. Uh, type is gonna be redshift, which automatically selects the port for me. Source 
Oh, I can actually just do my IP and it automatically puts it in. Ha! Ah, that's pretty cool. Um, so save that. Go back over here. Just verify. Okay, so the rules are in there now. Um, my IP address is in there as inbound traffic. So now we can come back here and we can watch what's going on. We can go back to Redshift in our 500th tab. Yeah, see, this is the old thing. At some point it started being the new. Um, so I want to come here. I want to hit the cluster. Actually, I'm going to go into the new one just because that'll make this video more evergreen, I think is the thing. I uh, just got to figure out how to actually find the stuff because I know how to do it in the old one. So here, we're going to go to our cluster, action, modify, Redshift cluster database network and security. So I should now be able to add this security group. as well, modify the cluster. That went very fast. All right, so now I should have just opened a, basically a, a port connection in the firewall from my IP address so that my house can talk to Redshift. Um, and again, this is one of those things like security wise, I could have opened it to the entire internet, but like there's no need to do it. So I fall back to the least privilege. So the least amount of privilege possible is having it for my house. Like I need to be able to talk to it. So I'm not going to open up for the world. No need to. Um, now, yeah, there's no need to. Um, it, there may be some other reason, but also that like if I accidentally put the username and password up here and you see it, you still can't get to it because um, the firewall is going to stop you. So it's all the like security is kind of all these overlapping things. That was one of them. Um, let's see what happens now if we get a different uh, error. There we go, password authentication failed. So we've connected to the database now, we've made the connection. Um, I'm excited about this. I I kind of knew how to do something, I knew what needed to be done, but I wasn't thinking about like, oh, opening the ports of the security group. Like this is again, it's just like step by step of, okay, what's the, what's the next little thing that I need to do to make progress? And like sometimes there's 10 little things, eight. Um, but you just, you pick one and go. And like, it's like, it's it's super easy to get kind of overwhelmed with the stuff, but it's just a little bit of like, okay, like how do I make this go? And like, so that's the same thing with like, I, I'm not worried about any of this code right now. I'm just trying to get my computer to talk to Redshift. Um, and so now I'm gonna try and get my computer to log into Redshift. Um, and the way that I'm gonna do that actually is, uh, uh, how do you do high environmental variables? There you go. So so we're gonna import OS. So what I'm gonna do? Just I don't want the um, I don't want the credentials stored in code here. So I'm gonna make environmental variables that have the username and password in them, and then call those environmental variables from in here. Um, uh, and that should work. So connection string. And this is one of those. Okay, so for user, blah, blah, blah. So if I do, whoops. Ah! Right now, I'm just gonna try and do a replacement in there. So, and I know there's different ways to do this and I'm probably doing it not the right way for people. But so hopefully now the username it's gonna say here is ASDF, ASDF. Okay, good. So now I can I can replace that with the actual username, um, which just to make sure I can do that. And we already know what the username is, so I don't have any problem showing it. I just wanna make, so the other trick is, I, I don't know if this is gonna work. So hopefully in PyCharm right now, if I put something in this terminal, that terminal is going to be associated when I when I make these runs. That's actually what I'm hoping is going to happen. Um, 
So export rs user equals aws dev. And so now we're going to grab that. We're going to come over here. We're going to do this and we're going to do rs, whoops, rs user. And so now that error message that we saw here, hopefully it says uh, AWS user. Nope. Keyword error, RS user. Oh, see. Python consoles, really problems. Um, so now we're going to go look at PyCharm. Environmental variables. How to set environmental variables in Python. You set a for the run configuration, is that it? Open the run configurator selector in the top right and click edit configurations. Top right, top right. Edit configurations. Ah, uh, interesting. Uh, copied redshift is what we're on. Parameters, environment, environmental variables. So we just put all of them in, like in with commas. Oh, trans variables. Okay. Oh. That tab should have gone over. It is AWS dev, right? We'll find out. All right, so now hopefully we don't get the keyword error, we get environmental variable AWS dev. Okay, that's how we pass them, cool. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that environmental variable for the password. I'm gonna hide that for a minute while I do that. So you're not gonna see that. Again, you can't get to the database, but we're still gonna not show you the password. Um, Definitely, definitely, definitely feel a little tired. Uh, so we're gonna go back to our configurations, environmental variables, add Okay, cool. So we got that. Now our environmental variable set. So our username and password are not in code. Um, and also not visible on stream. Oh, wow, that was a lot. Oh, interesting. It's got a different... That's weird. I would have expected that to just click like one star or something, but it, for some reason liked everything. Okay. Um, so here, not surprisingly, EMV IORN RS pass. Should have said password, but whatever, it's fine. Survey says, oh, crap. Uh, hang on. AWS user, not AWS. Um, not AWS dev. Um, that I got that I can bring this back now wait can I yes um, 
Yes. So now we've got it set with what we think is the so AWS dev was the wrong thing. It's AWS user. Um, copied Redshift. Okay, made the connection. Good. So we're in. We're talking. Uh, that's pretty sweet. Sweet. So now, and this is interesting. So I don't have to use. Um, I'm not having to use the MFA credentials. Uh, this is just using, which makes sense. This is just using the username and password for um, Redshift that then has a role associated with it. You could pass, according to the documentation, I could actually pass the MFA credentials I wonder if I should do that. And so, no, because you still have to send the command to the copy. So you still have to make this connection. And then Redshift already has that role. The thing that I don't know is if the role gets associated with the user. I need to do a little more investigation. Um, about how Redshift can talk to S3 and limiting down those things. Because right now, we're usually, we're often using username password for the connections, I think, and sometimes we're all, we're kind of doing both. It was talking about how security is more, or it's better security-wise to use the role. But then, uh, yeah, I guess you would just provide access to the thing, if data's in there, data's in there, there wouldn't be, see the trick that that would let somebody do is so if we have, I need to, I need to think through this and, and see if I'm missing something, but like if you have four um, four tables and you have four different users and each, each user can only get to one of the tables and you have four S3 buckets, each with a file in them and you want those things to load you want the, the user that has the access to the S3 bucket, to the table to only have access to that S3 bucket. But if, but I'm not sure if that role, in order for the, in order for the role to be able to have access to all of the S3 buckets, I don't know if that gives every user the ability to do it. Like, did we, did we assign the role, because we assigned the role to the database, not to the user. Right? Am I making that up? I'm very tired. Um, I don't think that's where he had roles, was it? Manage I am roles. Yeah, see that happens at the cluster level. Um, because that means everybody who can connect to the database, who can run that query, can run that role. I mean, you assign, in the SQL statement, find that SQL statement. Wait, wait, it's back over here. Nope. Nope. So the SQL statement got run as the user and you passed the role in it. I'm not sure how that role ties into the database user. Okay, I need to do a little more thinking there and a little more looking there. Because um, what we what we don't want to have happen. So we've got we've got people that are locked down to tables, and we've got um, S3 buckets that are locked down, and there should be a, like a one-to-one -one correlation there, and you shouldn't be able to 
get into there, but if like if that copy statement would allow somebody over here to see all those to to get into all those S3 buckets, that's a problem. Um, I gotta think through that and figure out what I'm missing, um, or if we need to do because there was the the redshift role that we passed that got associated with. Let's see, pulls out. So that's redshift rolls in there. And then, so that provides the role, and then you, you run the SQL statement to, to talk to that role. Okay, that makes sense, I was lost there for a second. Um, but like anybody, how, how do I lock down this role so that only individual users can access it? I may not solve this right now. I'm not going to solve this right now. Um, yeah, I need to figure that out. Okay. All right, just to finish, just to finish this up. Um, so. SQL, um, we're just gonna go grab this again. Whoops, that was weird. So there's a SQL statement. And then we can burn all that. Grab this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Do this. Uh, so let's actually try something different. I actually don't know what happens if you run the copy statement twice or multiple times. Um, okay, that, so that, our session. Look, okay, so here we go. We're gonna we're gonna do a test. Because um, what should have happened by now, by far, is our token should have expired. So data three. Uh, uh, uh. Huh. All right, so our token should have expired. So when I try and run this, push that three, this should not work, I think. Yep, expired token, hooray. So now, if we run our get token process again with our proper MFA token, because like right now, this won't work because that, that token has expired. Oops, something like that, hello. This is access denied because this is wrong. So we're, we keep running back and running back and running back. Whoops, ah, oh, I deleted, or it changed. Now when we run this, that should work. That should give us a new set of credentials. Now we've got a new set of credentials. Now I come here and we run this one. And that sends an S3 file, and we can just check on that real quick because we should see something slightly different now because it should be three rows. Uh, we go in here. Hello, MFA sent file. Hold on. Hold on. Uh oh, why did that ever work? Three rows. And so now, let's see what happens here. I don't know what's going to happen because. Some of that data is already in there. Uh, and I don't know if the copy is like a copy and replace or if it's an append. Um, copying to Redshift, process completed. Okay, so that's a good sign. Select star from SEL loader is not what we want. Select star from test one. All right, let's run this. Again, this surprises me. Call one, data one, data two. Uh, did not appear to load anything. Crap. Oh, come on. Crap. 
copyright shift con. Con gets the cursor, get the cursor. Cursor execute SQL, this is a SQL. All right, I just wanna mess with the SQL for a second and see if it blows up. Yeah, so that's not a valid thing. Why didn't that update? And this is where I don't know enough about how this process actually works. We, I've, I've never really been on this part of the copy statement before. Uh, all right. Um, T-R-U-N. I don't think it's gonna work because it's not highlighted as a keyword. It's not yet angry yet. That's kind of weird. You've been logged out of the career. I'll log back into continue your retro cluster. What the hell? It's a little scary. Are these still alive? See, now I'm paranoid because it's like, what just happened? Um, See if we're still connected on this one. Nope. Okay. So something just expired time wise. Okay. We hope. And hopefully this isn't somebody hacking me. Please don't be hacking me out there, internet. Um, all right. So I want to put my password back in here. authentication token expired. This is what I was just telling me down here. Table one does not exist. Oh, shit. Ah, come on. Public. So truncate table is the same as drop, I guess? Oh, test one. I keep doing that. Test. Uno. Yeah, so the data's still in there. Um, this time. Okay, so it did work. So now if we run this, we shouldn't see anything.
Right, nothing to display. Now, if we run this, does this come back to life and give us something that actually pushes data in? Run again. I guess I could do this. Make it smaller. Oh, it's not working. Oh, why isn't it working? All right, I'm gonna throw that back there just so we don't have a proper roll name. Yep, it explodes. Oh, okay, here we go. This is interesting. So user AWS user is not authorized to use that role. Okay, so there probably is a way to get the roles connected to individual users. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I'll have to look into that. Okay, that's good. That makes me feel better. I, that definitely feels like the way it should have been. Um, but why isn't this working? Because like we do, if I run the same thing, from here. Do it. All right, so that looks like it ran. Do it. Now the data is loading. Okay, so why doesn't that work? I'm sending, I'm doing this, like literally that's the exact same command. Oh, suck. And I'm coming across, so it. I'm connecting to the database, we know that. I'm logged in with the same username and password, I know that, because there's only one. There's only the one database. Is there only the one database? Okay, let's change the database name. This should blow up too, because that shouldn't be there. Yep, okay. Fatal devs, so right, we've only got the one database. We're talking to the right database. We're not seeing, I'm not seeing any other errors pop up. Oh, what? <laughs> Wah. Uh, leave that there, where's this one? Okay. I don't know where the windows are anymore. I'm just gonna keep hitting stuff. Where's my one that had connections on it? Nope. Nope. All right, I got those. I got those. I can start closing some windows because I'm losing track of things. Excuse me. We know that, we know that. We're good there, we're good there. Okay, I only have one window open. Where did my... Oops. I guess I'll just get to make another one. Um... Oh, new. Take two. Redshift. UI clusters, whatever editor. There's all my stuff again. Okay, that's cool. Didn't drop it like that. Good on you. All right, so let's do this then. I want to see at least see what happens here. 
So that table already exists, we don't need that. That's why I'm leaving it there for now. Can you move these? Nope. Uh, I just want to see what happens if you run. So we know that running here, the copy command works. We'll run it again a second time just to see what happens. Um, Cause I'm curious, I, I actually don't know what happens I, if, it, if it adds or if it replaces. Um, and actually let's do this. So let's go back to PyCharm. Let's make our push and let's um, just change these to five and six. Just to see what happens. So we know we've got two different data elements in there. Um, run it. So that passed. Run this. Okay, so it just depends. Uh, except it doesn't say five and six. Oh, did I not push? Copy. Oh, it's doing the copy data redshift. Ah, see? I wanted to run the file that I'm on. Grr. Uh, push to S3. No, that should get pushed to S3. Okay. So now if we run it again, it'll show just to prove it. We should see five and six when we run the select again. Six. Okay, it, it just keeps appending. So you'd want to truncate and copy um, when we do that. Uh, and the, unless we're doing loads by the day. Actually, I didn't know that worked. Um, now I know. Uh, database dev, user AWS, change connection. No, redshift cluster one. Why? Oh, why? If we quite literally copy this, And paste it. I don't need to use semicolons. Put it right there. Magic. Copy to Redshift. Tweet. That took a half second longer. Uh, oh, actually, I guess we should do this first. Where's my truncate? We select, nothing's gonna be there. Nothing's there. See, it goes so much faster. Got the bad feeling about it. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's literally the same, like I copied and pasted. Could it be? I mean, it, but it should error. It's not erroring. Yeah, okay, so you can't do that.
And like, if we point it to a different thing, it blows up because it can't get to the file. File does not exist because I put an S at the end of it. Now there's no S. We did the roll. We're doing CSV. We're copying to test one. What do you think about that? Nope. Redshift, copy, not working. They don't have errors is the problem. Here, how did I show this troubleshoot failed? We don't have STL load errors is the thing. Select on STL load errors. Select retard to analyze 16 columns. Data table, data table. Nope. Oh my god, don't make that happen. I'm going to edit that and make it not be giant. Table, select star. That doesn't actually have anything to do with the copy, I don't think. Copy my schema, my table from. Okay, yeah, it's doing an S3 thing. Java code. Okay, so wait. Um, read the right docs, S3 contents. When I run the command, it executes the run through start. However, I execute the S3 code, the exact same connection I the code just hangs. I'll execute update. When it runs, log in the error. Java code works perfectly. You want to the CSD to run. Nope, not helpful, not helpful, not helpful. Nothing's loaded. There we go, resolution. Um What the hell? Um, the problem happens. My CSV file uses carriage returns as line terminators. That's not what I'm using. The file is parsed as one line. I'll copy through, unless there's something going on with the translation. But again, it works. That just doesn't make any sense. Uh, cop G. What is it called? Cop G. These pipes are gonna go like this, no problem with that. This doesn't make any sense. Um, Con 
and set. I'm just gonna, I'm just messing around at this point. Um, I'm just trying things. Like I, I have no idea where to go next. Um, I'm think maybe it's an encoding thing, but like I still I can't I can't reconcile that it works from like the ex the exact same SQL statement when run through the web interface works when run externally does not work. And there's no errors coming back from it. Um, so it tried to load something, test one failed. So now we go look at the STL errors again. Um, Select star from STL load errors. Okay. Uh, I am getting tired. That is not what I did. I did this. Why didn't I copy? Try that again. Did I screw something up there? Oh, the light bulb. Okay. I'm good. Actually, let me put that CSV back in before I forget about it. <sighs> Delimiter not found. So it's, I mean, it's hitting the file. What the hell? I am at a loss. Because it just tried to load the file and it saw the raw field value, like it sees it, it's touching the file, it's looking at it. The only, th that doesn't make sense. Um, unless it's, unless it's something here. But again, that doesn't make sense because it's so where the SQL statement comes from, the SQL statement just talks to the database and then the database does the processing. So that SQL statement goes in. So there should be no difference at all between where it's coming from. I mean, where it's coming from is irrelevant, should be irrelevant because the exact same SQL statement is coming down. Like literally I copied it and pasted it. Paste it, 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 it. Um, I'm at a loss. Because I changed the IAM role, I changed that. Uh, test one public. Um, oh, let's try this. Here, let's try this. Test two. It's probably going to give us an error about the table not existing. Non existent table, table two. Go back to table one. Everything passes. I do not understand what is happening. Just to prove it one more time, we're going to copy from here. We're going to make a new window. 
We're going to paste it in. We're going to hit run. It passed. All right, so it went. It took a long time though, right? That took a while. So nothing's there. We're going to run the query. We're going to pick this up. It's going to take a few seconds. There's the data. What the hell is going on? Do you have, I mean, it's executing, right? Execute, SQL. I don't I don't get it. I mean, obviously something's going on, but like, that is breaking my brain. Um, crap, I thought I was close to being done and could go to bed. I'm not going to say I'm going to beat this tonight because who knows. Uh, Kai Cop G2 copy no sequel whatever redshift this is where we got it right tag up you make connection host database password we got all that stuff port we're doing all that we're gonna make a cursor we're going to execute, first to fetch all. Hmm, what's this? Aha, 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 aha. You have to commit, oh my God, really? Wait. Oh, it went fast though too. Ah, I don't know about that. Cursor, execute. Cursor, execute. I can't remember if we cleared. Okay, again, I don't think we did. Crazy community. Okay, here we go. So verify there's nothing in the table, step one. Okay, good lord.
What's it called? Pi Cop G2 Pi PSY. We are gonna make a note of that right now. So what, that took an hour? Um, make sure to remember, make sure to run the commit. in here for now. I can deal that later. So lots of times with this stuff, I just throw code in and then slowly but surely I'll edit it down um, to refine it a little bit. Like, but this is this is pretty good too. And also um, rule based. Whatever. I'm just putting in some keywords uh, to get that figured out. Okay. So I want to trunk so the so I want to truncate first, and then and then do the copy. But like I've, so I've got I've got all this set up basically now. I can so I can go get my credentials. I can use my credentials to push to S3, and I can then connect to the database and run the copy that talks to S3 via the role based stuff. Those are all the parts. So I've got all the parts now. Um, it's just now so it's now it's just fine tuning. So it's actually getting into Altrix, um, getting Altrix to pass in the MFA credentials easily um, and uh, setting up how we want to do the, the, the naming of the tables and doing all that stuff. Um, uh, there, there may be a little bit, like I'm not sure how Alteryx creates tables. Um, so we could actually do something potentially here where uh, we look at the CSV file and you actually just build the table off of it. Um, so just completely drop it and, and rebuild it, um, starting with the headers from scratch, uh, which I'm probably going to write that code regardless anyways. I don't know if we're necessarily going to want to do that or necessarily need to do that with the way that we're doing this uh, Alteryx stuff, because Alteryx may already have pieces that can do that for us. Um, but I think that would just be a good piece of code to have so that basically you can say, hey, in the schema, say basically say, hey, here's a CSV file. I'm going to throw the CSV file at you and I just want you to like make a table out of it. Um, with with the columns being the, the header row, and then just drop all the rest of the data in there. Um, the and then don't necessarily the the trick with that right is you have to make assumptions about what the data types are. Um, so I think Alteryx, I know Alteryx has some of that stuff. Um, the question is if that's independent, if that's in broken out enough from the stuff that we need to do with the copy statement um, or, or moving it in. Um, I don't know the answer to that. We'll have to figure that out. So. Um, but worst case, you just make everything a giant text string to start with and then refine from there. Um, uh, or you can basically just build the table directly in Redshift, or you can come up with a SQL statement to actually throw into it to build it. Um, and that's what I mean by building Redshift, whatever. Um, but this is working. Turns out that commit is what was required, uh, which I, I almost, I, I, I probably should have remembered that from way back in the day when I was doing, I think my SQL stuff with Perl. Um, I think there was some some commit stuff that you also had to do there. Maybe, maybe it was Postgres. I can't remember. Um, and wouldn't surprise me if it was Postgres because that this Redshift is largely Postgres database and underneath the hood. Um, sweet. So the last thing I'll do is just uh, uh, put it in Git. Wow, I'm a little tired. Um, Redshift. There you go. Um, so that's connected up. That's working. Um, I'm just going to leave this database running, I guess, because I don't. I need to research the free tier. I'll look at that maybe tomorrow. Um, and see what the uh, what the implications are. But again, it's it's a quarter an hour. Uh, if I go off the free tier, so like I can if it 
and it's somewhere on the free tier right now, so I'm not too worried about it. But even if I somehow got off the free tier or got off the out of the trial, it would be, um, you know, a few bucks, and I can handle that right now. So, of course, I don't want to pay it if I don't have to. But um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, we're doing the MFA stuff. Everything's logged in. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, folks, uh, that was a heck of a run. Uh, we'll get together sometime soon and keep going. Uh, this project's probably done from the stuff that y'all will be able to see because the rest of it will be actually migrating it into Altrix. And I don't know, I mean, yeah, so I, I'm going to have some other people help me on that and we're probably not going to stream that. Um, but I've got other stuff, other ideas and stuff that I'm going to stream. So I'm going to be doing this more frequently, blah, 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 blah. Well, actually, I shouldn't even say that, right? Because like, whatever. So I'm just going to say bye. Y'all have a good one. Uh, take it easy. Be kind to each other and we'll see you around.